Buongiorno. Buongiorno. <laughs> um, so I will speak in English, and it's not my native in language, so sorry if it's a little bit uh, confusing, but I, I try to be my best. Um, so Camera Lissida is a documentary producing uh, company, and um, we are focusing for more than two years now to try to bring the documentaries in virtual reality. Maybe not for TV, maybe for installation, maybe we are trying a lot of things. And this project is um, The Enemy. Uh, it's a project by uh, Karim Ben Khalifa, who is the, the author. Karim is a war photographer for more than 15 or 17 years now. And uh, he came to um, virtual reality after a fellowship at the MIT Open Doc Lab uh, three years ago. He, he discovered the, the, the Oculus Rift, so the, the first prototype of uh, Oculus. And I will try to bring, bring you with me in my journey to virtual reality. So, I guess you, you might know that. This kind, or this one, or maybe just this one. <laughs> I, I have to say that my first discovering of the virtual reality just feel, uh, make me feel like this. I guess you know these images. It was something like uh, more than one century ago. And when the train arrived in, on, in the movie theater, just we, we, we say that people run, out, run uh, out of the theater. That was something like that that happened to me. <laughs> it was like um, a work in progress virtual reality uh, project without floor. And I just look down and say, wow, <laughs> that was very, very creepy for me. But I really believe in that art enables technology and technology challenge art. That's what we are trying to do at Camera Lucida. So that's a tribute to our friend from Google here. That was one of our uh, discover what can be virtual reality in a museum. It's a short video, and of course, please try it in a cardboard, it's much better. Okay, so you can see around, you can go in the painting, that's another experience I, I have made a few months ago in Montreal. Uh, Robert Lepage is a director, a uh, metteur en scène, and uh, yeah, we, we say metteur en scène, I guess. Uh, and he created an exhibition at the National Library in Montreal just to accompany you in the discovery of virtual reality. So you begin like in a decor, like that, it's a library, everything is set, and it's really incredible and very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> okay. Is it okay? So you have the images. After a while, the wall just opened. Everybody, you, you are a group, of, a group of 20 people at the same time. You enter like an incredible room with trees. And everybody has a headset in his hands. Then you can sit. I let you discover the, the movie. You can sit at the tables. Put the headset on and the audio phones on, and you enter in a 360 movies. 
it's 10 360 movies about libraries that disappeared or that are far away, and you just discover these libraries. It's a journey, uh, it, it um, stays during uh, 40 minutes, uh, plus 15 minutes in the, um, in the decor uh, at the beginning. And that's something like my most deep experience in virtual reality, because everything is organized. The enter and the, the way you are going out of the virtual reality. But at the, at the same time, we were looking for another way. And uh, I'm happy to, to say that just after the presentation of Dale, because I think really in virtual reality, what gives you the power or what gives the, the power to the content is that you have no more button or mouse or anything, just your body as an interface. That's what we are doing with the enemy. I just show you a few images. From, that, was, that was the first test we have done two years ago in New York City. It was uh, the first stage, the first prototype of our project. It's an Oculus with some strange antennas. And so the audience is uh, wearing the headset and they can move in an empty space, something like uh, 50 square meters. They can move as they want. Some are moving very strangely. <laughs> Some are just thinking or staying stand up like that. Some are sizing things. They all are engaged in the same content. But of course, as in real life, they are acting differently. That's our project. I just let Karim present it. it. It will be better. The sound is okay? This project was born out of frustration as a photojournalist. I have covered conflict for the last 18 years, and I knew I could not just do the same when I became a father. Yet, I was not done with trying to understand wars. My friend in Israel, when they know I'm heading for Gaza, cannot help themselves but to wish me luck and to stay safe. They believe a lot of people in Gaza are irrational. But also when I spend weeks in Gaza working and I'm about to return to Israel, my Palestinian friends are telling me exactly the same. Just be careful there. So there is a bigger story than the war itself and perhaps this is the one I need to explore and share. This project is rooted in my experience, covering from one side to the other in many different wars and conflicts. Finding that people's dreams, hopes, and nightmares are often more similar than they are different. Who is your enemy? For the audience to understand and feel that, we will use artificial intelligence and cognitive science, and the latest technologies in virtual and augmented realities. <laughs> שירצה לפגוע בי, במשפחה שלי, בעם שלי, בנשק, בדרכים אחרות שיכולות לפגוע בנפש. פוקס הרל, הפרופסור ומפונר של איסלאב על MIT, יכול לפרוט את האנליטיקל פאקפון. When the audience walks in between enemies, we will measure how they physiologically respond to the installation. And by using neuroscience research, we hope to shed light on what kind of empathy has been created. I am planning to bring the fighters of other long-standing conflicts together in a very same way. You 
create an enemy as a kid without having met your enemy, because the society around you has created an enemy in the other. So the question is, could I be you if I was on the other side? Thank you. That's not a project, of course. <laughs> um, so just in a few seconds, because I, I have a short time, so the, the project is we are going in the war conflict zones, and we are shooting combatants. So they are, of course, real combatants. We, Karim is going there with uh, four cameras and a Kinect, as you, you have seen in, in the trailer. And um, so the four cameras just uh, shoot the combatants in four different um, uh, views. And the Kinect is just to take the volume and the size, the ex exact size. And then we rebuilt everything in 3D. Uh, the, the project, uh, as uh, we, we have made the first prototype, was presented last year in um, several uh, festivals, um, Tribeca Festival, uh, at um, the Festival to the Grand Geneva, and all, all these kind of festivals last year, more uh, cinemas and audiovisual. And now we are building a real installation. Uh, and this installation is not only, of course, just uh, entertainment, it's really a tool. And for us, it's a tool to change the mind of people, of course, in the war zone, but also here in Europe or in, um, in North America or everywhere. So it's a tool to think about conflict and to share the humanity of the other. As you know, these long-standing conflicts are always made because someone told you the other is a bad one. So the, the other is not the same for everybody, of course, but at, uh, in all, the, all this occasion, it's uh, just a human, and that's what the project wants to show you. We have been in Israel and Palestine for, to shoot uh, Gilad on the left and uh, Abu Khaled. We've been also in uh, Congo, and we are going next month in El Salvador to, to meet uh, some uh, combatants from uh, El Mara's gangs. Uh, but we, we wanted to go uh, to push the, the experience further than that. And at the first time, for the first time to personalize really your experience. So now we are three people in the experience. Sorry. Three people, that means you are not alone with the combatants. You are five. You and the four others. Um, that means also you interact with uh, the others. That means you need to, show, to see them, of course. If not, you just uh, push the others. And that's... Uh, videos from uh, our last demo in, at the MIT last month. So if you, you need to see the others. So just uh, on, your, on your right, you have one of the other people you can see. It's like a silhouette, very like uh, yeah, glass silhouette. And it disappeared if you are not too close because we want you to be uh, the most at ease you can in this environment, but also just not to interact too much with the others. We are trying to make an installation for up to 20 people at the same time in the room, uh, five by five, of course. We will have several rooms, a room for each conflict, and then you, so it will, be five people, and then when the five first will go in the second room, the five other will enter. 
We are also working with Fox. Fox is a professor at the ICE lab at the MIT, and he's working with us just to adjust and uh, to adjust the experience to everybody. So when you will book your ticket or your, your place to go, to go to the installation, you will also answer a questionnaire just to know how far you are from a conflict. Uh, do you have family in a conflict zone all over the world? Do you, have you been involved yourself in, in a conflict? Maybe you have some attached to, to some, something. We, know, we want to know as much as po possible uh, about you and your notion of war. And after that, of course, all your movements uh, in the in station will be tracked. Uh, not to, I mean, not only for research, but also to adjust the experience just for you. It will alter a little bit the narrative. Uh, if you look at the combatants in the eyes or his feet, if you, want, uh, if you um, spend more time with one or the other, all that will be uh, used to adjust the experience just for yourself. Uh, also, you, you will be able to be with people with you real, uh, in the real room, but not looking at the same content, because you, you can be in front of the Israeli and Palestinian combatant, but your neighbor will be in front of the Congolese, for example. So that will be really a personalized uh, experience. Uh, all that, of course, it's to answer a question, many questions with this project, but for, for today and the vision of uh, 2026, I thought maybe we, we can try to ask this question, are we really able to have a positive social impact? And is a museum or the site of conscience as a good location for that? My answer is yes, of course. We, to outreach the, the, the project and to build an, an audience and also, of course, to have this uh, strategy to uh, spread the, the project everywhere, we, we have uh, imagined also an app. The app is in uh, augmented reality, so that means we bring the uh, combatants in your real environment and you are not going in the virtual reality. You, you can see a pictures over there. It's really at the beta test for the moment, so uh, I have no videos. And uh, you, you will be able to watch the, the app also in um, cardboard, like um, in mixed reality. And uh, the, the spreading strategy is really to give you the chance, if you have been to the installation, to become a curator of your own installation. That means you, you will have the power to send the installation, the augmented reality installation, to your friends, maybe to your family all over the world, and just tell them, okay, you will go this afternoon or tomorrow in a, in a park, something outside, and in, at that place, you will be able to meet the combatants. And so you will be the curator for many and many of installations all over the world. And all these installations will be um, tracked on a map in, on the website and in the app. And uh, so just to measure the impact of the project. And do this Agents of Reconciliation Network. Yeah, that's it, I think. Uh, thanks a lot for being interested in this, and I hope to find you in the network of agents of reconciliation. Uh, just if I have one minute more, I just want to make a tribute to Dale. I haven't met you, but we are doing a, a new project, and just a few images I wanted to show you, because it's about minority, minority report tribute. Maybe I can just
So thanks for that. It was very inspiring. <laughs>